now on breakfast television by an author who has just penned a new book and it says here you're also uh, the prime minister of canada as i am well. well welcome stephen harper is with us right now and this is your book here a great game the forgotten leafs and the rise of professional hockey Wow, I, I, if, if I was going to predict you were going to write a book, I don't, I don't think this would have been it. How did, yeah. how did this come about? Well, you know, it goes way back to when I was leader of the opposition and people were bugging me to write a book. And I actually kind of started to put one together and then I sort of realized, you know, I spent all my time doing politics, six, seven days a week, 10, 12 hours a day. And I actually wanted to do something different, something to get my mind off politics. Figured I needed a hobby, so I started working on this 15 minutes a day turned out I knew a lot less than I thought I did so it ended up taking me nine years but I finally got it done so it was a great diversion it was a great diversion from the pressures of work it has to be something like that yeah. it has to uh, to take away and and the really nice thing is is that all the the proceeds from this book go to the military families all fund. of my proceeds yeah go to the military families fund so it's a great cause so we ask everybody to to buy it for that reason. Also, it's a, you know, and as I say, it's a real interest and passion of mine. I grew up here in Toronto, and I was always interested. I could never play hockey very well, so I was always interested in history and in the really early history I, of the game. I don't know. I think we have we have a picture that says that says different. Uh, a, with the, do we have that picture from uh, the Lee Side Lions? Yeah. Is this the, the, the? There we go. There we are. Uh, yeah, and there's lots of people uh, who remember me playing for the Lee Side Lions and remember me as a great hockey player. What'd you play? What, what but, position did you play? Uh, I was on the wing, uh, usually right wing, sometimes left wing. But I had three goals in three years, so I was, <laughs> I, I was not the great player people remember. Were you going to go on to the NHL? Did, did everybody you? was going. Yeah. To, everybody starts that way, but I had to settle to, for being prime minister. So, it's interesting. We had Nazem Kadri here just a short time ago. We did. You take a kid like Kadri, and you put him back a hundred years. Yeah. Uh, you know, first of all, he's not going to get paid what 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 he was paid. No. Uh, it was a completely different world. Well, yes and no. If you put him back. You know, 50 years, he was going to get paid almost nothing. But back in the period I'm looking at, pre-World War I, um, you actually had competition between professional leagues, and there were periods where the players were being paid enormous amounts of money. Uh, you know, just like today, leagues were going bankrupt, players were threatening unions and strikes. Uh, Cyclone Taylor, a big star of um, 100 years ago, at one point was the highest paid per game athlete in the world. Um, so there were eras when there's been lots of competition among owners and players have been paid a great deal of money and then there's been periods where they've been like serfs. Uh, Gordy Howe working two jobs when he was the best player in, in the world. And Toronto has quite a hockey history and, and we all think that the, that, that the history starts and stops with the Leafs. Right. And it doesn't and I mean, that's your book, The Forgotten Leafs. Well, this book of course is about hockey becoming a professional sport yeah. and all of the changes that brought about to the game and the fact is that although the Toronto Maple Leafs today are the wealthiest professional hockey club in the world, the fact is this was very controversial. Uh, most people, I would say most many people in Toronto, including powerful people, thought the whole idea of a professional athlete was, uh, was, was something morally abhorrent. It's hard to relate to now, but they, they felt that paying an athlete was like prostitution and it was not a respectable profession and there were uh, people, uh, people who ran hockey in Toronto at the time, the Ontario Hockey Association, fought for many, many years to block any kind of professionalism in this city.